Section 5.1, our last chapter, yay! Areas and distance notes. Alright, so, antiderivatives can be used to find the area under a curve. Many functions don't have antiderivatives. We can easily find, so we have to approximate the area. Ryman sums a method for approximating area under a curve by dividing the interval into rectangles. The more rectangles, the more accurate the approximation becomes. As the number of rectangles approach infinity, we get an exact area. Width of a rectangle on the interval, closed interval from A to B, what we'll do is our change in x, or delta x, will equal b minus a divided by the number of rectangles that we want to use. We can use left endpoints, right endpoints, and midpoints. And there's another technique I'll show you called trapezoids. All right, <clears throat> so find the area of the region bounded by the graph of the function and the x-axis over the given interval. We're going to start simple here. <clears throat> y equals x squared on a closed interval from 0 to 1 with four rectangles. So here's my parabola x squared from 0 to 1. We're looking for the area under the curve. And we are breaking this up into four sections. So what we want to do is we want to find the area of rectangles that you can possibly have on these regions. Region S sub 1, S sub 2, S sub 3, S sub 4. All right, so if we were asked to use right endpoints, we know we're going to have 0, 1 fourth, 2 fourths, 3 fourths, 4 fourths. That's our change in x. B minus A. 1 minus 0 divided by 4 is 1 fourth. So that means all my rectangles are going to have a base of 1 fourth. So use the same pictures over here, but I want to kind of show you how you would want to draw your rectangles. If we're using right endpoints, our first 1 fourth, our first rectangle is going to use the upper right hand corner on the curve. All right, there's all my numbers. There's my first rectangle. Went to the upper right-hand corner, hit the curve, and there's my rectangle. So finding the right, that's what capital R is for, of sub 4. That means you have four rectangles using the upper right-hand corner. That's going to equal your base, 1 fourth, times the height. And the height is determined by taking this 1 fourth, this value, and plugging it into your function x squared. So 1 fourth times 1 fourth squared. Change in x, again that's your base. This is your height being squared. 1 fourth squared gives us that height right there. This 1 fourth is not the height, it's the whole thing. It's the y coordinate of your x squared function. All right, our next rectangle will be drawn from 1 fourth to 2 fourths going to the upper right hand corner. So there's my rectangle. Again, same base, 1 fourth. But now your height is taking 2 fourths, plugging it in for x squared, and that's the y coordinate. So your height is 2 fourths squared. Third rectangle, 2 fourths to 3 fourths, upper right hand corner. So again, same base, plus 1 fourth times 3 fourths squared. That's like saying f of 3 fourths if you think of this as a function. And then our last rectangle, 3 fourths to 4 fourths, upper right hand corner, 1 fourth times 4 over 4 squared. All right, so we crunch the numbers, and we're going to add these all up. Well, if you look at your denominators, 4 squared is 16 times another 4 is 64. That's going to happen to all my denominators. So we're going to write this over 1 common denominator, 64. Then 1 times 1 squared, 1. 
1 times 2 squared, well that's 4 times 1, that's a 4. 1 times 3 squared, 3 squared is 9 times 1, 9. 1 times 4 squared, 16 times 1, 16. Add this all up, let's see, 1 and 9 is going to be 10, 4 and 16 is going to be 20, so that's 30 over 64, which we can reduce it to 15 over 32. And if you want to convert it to a decimal, there it is, 0 0.468. So come back here. Whoops, too fast. Ting mouse is going nuts again. 0 0.46875. All right, part B. <clears throat> now we're going to talk about left endpoints. The setup is the same for finding your delta x, your change in x. B minus A, 1 minus 0. Now, L, capital L, sub 4. This means, again, four rectangles, but we're using the upper left-hand corner. Now, it's going to be kind of tricky here to see that first rectangle because in this first base of 1 fourth, the height of the upper left-hand corner, there is no height. So that's going to be 1 fourth times 0 over 4 squared. And that's a zero. So that's the height of my first rectangle. See, when we did right endpoints, we went up to this upper right-hand corner. Now we're going to the upper left-hand corner. The second rectangle. Now I'm looking at this rectangle, and the upper left-hand corner hits the point right there on the curve. So that's 1 fourth times 1 fourth squared. Third rectangle. Now we go up till we hit the curve on the upper left hand corner of the rectangle. So that's going to be one fourth for the base times two fourths squared. Last rectangle, upper left hand corner hits the curve at three fourths here. So that's one fourth times 3 fourths squared. Again, all 64 for the denominator, but now we have 0 plus 1 plus 4 plus 9. This comes out to be 14 over 64, or reduces to 7 over 32. So one thing you're going to notice is now this is what we would call an underestimation because we have missing area. But again, your right endpoints, they were all above the curve. That was an overestimation. So that area was too big. So crunching the numbers, my left endpoint gave me 7 over 32, or 0.21875. My right endpoints, that was more area than we needed. And that gave me a decimal answer, 0 0.46875. All right. So that, I believe, was 15 over 32. So, I mean, 7 over 32, 15 over 32, holy cow. It almost looks like the right endpoint is twice as big, if not a little bit more than twice as big as the left endpoint probably not the best to use when using such small rectangles because we're leaving out so much area. What would be nice is to find out a way that we could choose instead of having too much over the curve and not enough under the curve is to find a happy middle ground. Hint, hint, midpoint. All right. So here's the midpoint technique. Again, change in x stays the same. We're looking at the same width of our rectangles. But now what we're going to do is we're going to go up to the midpoint between our 0 and 1 fourth. Halfway in between would be 1 eighth. And we're going to go up and hit that curve and draw our rectangle top right through the midpoint of 1 eighth on the curve. So that'll be 1 fourth times 1 eighth 
squared. We're going to plug in 1 8. Then we're going to do that for our second rectangle here. So halfway between 1 4th and 2 4th is 3 8 So we go up, we hit the curve, and then we draw our rectangle, make a horizontal segment here. That's the top, and there's our rectangle. So second rectangle, rectangle again, base, one-fourth, times three-eighths squared. Third rectangle, same base, halfway in between two-fourths and three-fourths is five-eighths. We go up, hit the curve to the left and to the right. Parallel to our base, draw our line segments down. And now you can kind of see what's happening here is that see how this part of the triangle here from 1 fourth to 3 eighths is over the curve and then we're missing some area from 3 eighths to 2 fourths so the concept here is that you know this triangle that was over on the left kind of can fill in almost this area right here and then the same thing is going to happen when we build our next rectangle so between 3 fourths and 4 fourths we know we're going to get eighths, so if you want to think of it as double the numbers, six eighths, eight eighths, halfway between six and eight is seven eighths. So again, you can kind of see, here we are at the midpoint, seven eighths, hit the curve. We got this triangle that's over the line. We got this triangle missing, so this kind of makes up for this area right in here. So our last triangle is going to be one-fourth times the seven eighths squared. So this is how we use the midpoint technique for finding our Riemann sums. So time to crunch the numbers. Now we're going to have a bigger denominator here. So 8 squared is 64 times a 4 is 256. But you're going to have 1 squared is 1 plus 3 squared 9 plus 5 squared 25 plus 4 squared 749. So, I think I said that right. 1, 3, 5, 7 squared, 1, 9, 25, 27. Add that all up, we get 84 over 256, which reduces to 21 over 64, or a decimal value of 0.328125. Now, here, a much better approximation compared to what we had before. We were, remember, we had 7 over 32 and 15 over 32. So if we're thinking in terms of 64th, let's see, double that, that'd be 14 over 64, 30 over 64. We've got a much better approximation here. A fourth technique, which is another really good technique when you use small amounts of triangles, or excuse me, triangles, rectangles, excuse me, all right, is called the trapezoid technique. And the trapezoid technique is, if you think about it, it's a trapezoid turned 90 degrees. So normally you think here's your base on the bottom, another base is on the top. Well now, if you look between 3 fourths and 4 fourths, here's your two parallel sides. So that's base 1, base 2. And here's the height of your trapezoid, which is being the width of your rectangle, if you will. And then we connect this with a straight segment right here. So there's your trapezoid. So one thing you're going to have to do here is you're going to have to remember your trapezoid formula. It's going to be height times 1 half times the base 1 plus base 2, which are going to be these two segments here. So 1 half times B1 plus B2 is like finding the average of your two bases that we're using. Now, this one gets a little bit more involved because our formula is more involved. All right, so my first trapezoid, T, capital T sub 4, like I said, more involved. It's going to take more writing here, but again, it will be more accuracy. So 1 fourth, that's the height. That's your change in X right here that we had before times 1 half times 0 squared plus 1 fourth squared. 
So here's the dilemma. We're going to have to square two numbers and add them together, which makes this a little bit more difficult, but again, pretty darn accurate when we have a small number of rectangles to use. All right, next trapezoid will be between 1 fourth and 2 fourths. So again, height 1 fourth of your trapezoid times 1 half. And now we're going to have to do 1 fourth squared plus 2 fourths squared. That's this trapezoid. So these are the two bases, B1 and B2. Third trapezoid is between 2 fourths and 3 fourths. So again, what's going to change here is 1 fourth times 1 half is the same. On the inside, we need to change our numbers to 2 fourths to 3 fourths. So there's our trapezoid. So now I'm starting to see the pattern. So the next one's going to have 3 fourths here and 4 fourths here. So there's my third trapezoid. One of the reasons why this one is well liked by mathematicians is because remember your left and right when we did the right endpoints we didn't use the zero and when we use the left endpoint we didn't use the four force now everything's being used here so now let's crunch oh boy see this is going to be more number crunching because we got these extra fractions being squared so looking at my denominator here, we're going to have 4 squared, which is 16, for all of them on the inside, which is okay because those will be like denominators. So 16 times the 4 times 2, 8, that's going to give me a denominator of 128. So all of them will have the same denominator. Now we'll just crunch numbers here. So 1 times 1, you got 0 plus 1, so that will be a 1 for the first trapezoid. Then we have 1 squared plus 2 squared, so 1 plus 4 is 5, times these 1's 5. 2 squared is 4, plus 3 squared is 9, that's 13 times 1, so that's the plus 13. Nine, 3 squared is 9, plus 4 squared is 16, 25 times 1. There's that number, we add it together, we get 44 over 128, which is 11 over 32. So, decimal-wise, 0.34375. So here was our left endpoint value, our right endpoint value. Here's our midpoint. Here's our trapezoid. So these two, much closer together, better approximation for what we're looking for. <clears throat> okay? So general rule of thumb, if you have small number of rectangles, if you want to be really accurate, when you look at your picture, try to eliminate the amount of overestimation. That's too much area above the curve. Try to eliminate the underestimation, not enough area under the curve. Midpoint and trapezoid will do that. They kind of fill in those corner areas in your change in X's, if you will. All right, example number two, let f be a continuous function defined on 0 through 12 as shown below. Find the midpoint Riemann sum for f of x over 0 to 12 closed interval with three subdivisions of equal length. All right, so that means m sub 3, we want three rectangles, change in x times f of x sub 1 plus change in x times f of x sub 2, plus change in x times f of x sub 3. Well, if we take our rule, b minus a, 12 minus 0, divided by the three rectangles we want, 12 over 3 is 4. So each subdivision is going to have a change in x that's going to be a 4. All right? So there's your three intervals from 0 to 4, 4 to 8, 8 to 12. So since we're doing the midpoint, we want to find what's in between 0 and 4, 4 and 8, 8 and 12. Well, between 0 and 4 is 2, 4 and 8, 6, 8 and 12, 10. Oh, how convenient. There's the 2, there's your 6, there's your 10. So my first interval is from 0 to 4, and I want the x in the middle, 2. 
So that would be 4 times f of 2, which is going to be 4 times 7. All right, plus 4 times f of x sub 2, which is now 6. So we want f of 6 right here. So f of 6 is the 39. So plus 4 times 39. Then for our last subinterval, plus 4 times x sub 3 is the 10. Now we're going to put 10 in here. So f of 10 is 103. So crunching all the numbers, 4 times 7 plus 39 plus 103, we get 596. All right. So let's find the midpoint Riemann sum of f of x equals x cubed plus 1 over the interval 0 to 4 using four subdivisions of equal length. So by rule, 4 minus 0, b minus a is 4, over 4 is 1. So each base of your rectangle is 1. That's great because multiplying by 1 is not going to change anything. So our intervals are from 0 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4. So if it's midpoint, again, we got to find the halfway point. Oh, we're going to get fractions here. All right, so x sub 1 will be 1 half, 3 halves, 5 halves, 7 halves. Those are the halfway values between our, so our subintervals here. So midpoint, change in x. Again, these were all going to be 1. So we just got to find f of 1 half, f of 3 halves, f of 5 halves, f of 7 halves. So 1 half gets substituted in for the x, so 1 half cubed plus 1, plus, remember, change in x is 1, we don't need to put that there, plus 3 halves cubed plus 1, plus f of 5 halves, 5 halves cubed plus 1, and then f of 7 halves, and then let's add these all together. So my fractions being cubed, let's work on that first. Denominator will be 8. 2 to the third is 8. So that's going to be 1 cubed is 1, plus 3 cubed, 27, plus 5 cubed, 125, plus 7 cubed, 343. I had to use a calculator for that one. Plus, now let's take care of the four ones, but we want to have a common denominator of 8. So that's 32 over 8. So 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 4. 4 times 8, 32. Add these all together. We get 528 over 8. Simplify it. We come to 66. Sound good? All right. So that's for the first part. We'll come back at this part juncture. We need to shorten these videos up. See you in a bit. Come on.